This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring defense attorney, Hidden Killers daily contributor, and host of the Defense Diaries podcast, Bob Motta. Maddie Soto, 13-year-old little girl whose life was cut short far too early. And the way it's looking, allegedly by someone who should have had her best interests at heart. This was not stepdad, but the partner of mom living all together in a small apartment. Turns out that, well, after she went missing and then after they found her body, they took a look at his phone and found evidence of abuse, sexual abuse, that was going on for at least the last two years. Abuse that was determined to have also have taken place in the very residence in which they all shared together, judging by the settings on some of those videos. Joining me to discuss this, the prime suspect in the case, Stephen or Stefan Stearns, and her mom, Jen Soto, whose stories don't seem to really add up very well. Bob Mata, defense attorney, host of the podcast, Defense Diaries. This is a twisted one. This is one I, I, I've heard um, many other cases being referenced, Casey Anthony and such, especially when talking about the mom, lack of emotion in, in her interviews and uh, timelines not lining up. Uh, early on in a case like this, how often is it that you have parents giving interviews where facts just don't line up? I mean, and, and could it also be, you're in a state of shock, so maybe things are not going to come out the way that they all, you know, maybe should. I mean, it's case by case. Yeah. You know, and typically, um, you know, in, in the cases that, that we've handled throughout our career, um, you know, and if it's a, a, like an aggravated sexual abuse of a minor type case, um, when there's an outcry, like a, like a typical mother uh, who may not have been aware of the abuse that was going on at either the hands of a boyfriend, a stepfather, a, a father, whatever the case may be, an uncle, whoever it may yeah. be, and they weren't aware of it when they become aware of it, ultimately go into protective mama bear mode and, you know, get the kid out of the house immediately. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's typical what we're seeing in Madeline's case is atypical and it really makes you wonder what's going on with mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? In, in a way that uh, really makes, makes all of us think that she's complicit uh, in one way or another. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can't help but feel that way, you know, because I, I just know how I'd be reacting. I yeah. know how my wife would be reacting if, if something was happening to one of my children uh, and and she became aware of it like you know i mean if if you're the perpetrator you better run for your life sucker yeah because my wife's coming after you you know what i mean and sure. it's like we're not seeing that in this at all no uh what we saw was uh, i mean obviously as as of right now by the time this airs by the time someone watches it everyone may be charged who knows uh but as of right now it should be said you know jen said has not been charged with anything uh not considered a suspect at least not publicly being stated, uh, but uh, none of it really adds up. She's made so many statements uh, in interviews while the daughter was missing that conflict with one another. Uh, in one place, uh, in the very same interview, uh, actually, she had said, well, we dropped her off. Then a little bit later in, he is the one who dropped her off. Uh, it, it, the timelines don't add up. It was, uh, I believe, uh, originally, and I, I could be off on this. I'm just kind of going from memory. It was around 8 or 9 a.m. that she was dropped off. There's uh, footage, uh, security cam footage of him, of uh, Stefan, uh, throwing away uh, Madeline's backpack and some of her things around 7.35 a.m., fairly close to where the body was found. Also, a flat tire uh, he was seen on some sort of security camera changing close to the location as well. Uh, it also shows Stearns returning around 8.19 a.m., to which investigators believe Maddie was visible in the car and believed to be dead. In one of the interviews with Mom, uh, according to her, she was sleeping. But hey, Maddie wasn't, uh, or, or Jen wasn't in the car. So how does she know if she was sleeping? 
or Sorry. not. Uh, yeah. Alibis. They're big. They're important. These two, either they're really off on everything or they really didn't uh, have a very strong story to begin with or thought that they could uh, rattle this off and no one's going to be the wiser. Yeah, it stinks of uh, Adam Montgomery and Kayla, Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, very much has so. Lot, has a lot of those uh, earmarks of those two. Um, yeah, I mean, it, like ultimately, and again, we don't know um, what they're doing behind the scenes, but mm -hmm. you can guarantee, you can be guaranteed that they feel the exact same way that we feel, them being law enforcement mm -hmm. and the prosecutor's office. Uh, like they are... They're looking for the evidence. Everything in terms of moving forward on charges is based on evidence. And they are, I'm sure, you know, methodically putting together a case. And if they have the evidence to go after mom, they're going to go after, her, you know, because all these things that you're talking about in terms of how the story's not adding up and not lining up, they see it. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, again, they've got to have the evidence to be able to prove it in a court of law because. In theory, when you impanel a jury, they don't know anything about the case. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not be true crime fans or, you know, observers, and they're not aware of what's going on, and they're not following the story like we are. So when they get in that box, the state has to be able to to put evidence forward that builds the case yeah. and, and, you know, that allows them to meet their burden in terms of whatever kind of culpability she may have in this, whatever hand she may have had in this. And, you know, so it's, it's going to be in there and, and for them, they have the time, you know, I mean, at this point, Madeline's been located, unfortunately, um, and, you know, they're, they're going to put their best foot forward in terms of trying to build a case against everybody that they feel is responsible for her death, you know, and uh, everything that, that, like I said, everything that we're looking at that seems sus, believe me, it seems sus to them as well. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.